Welcome into the New Orleans Saints podcast. You'll hear from players, coaches, broadcasters, and writers that cover the NFL on a daily basis. The New Orleans Saints podcast starts right now. Here's your host, Aaron Summers. Welcome into our New Orleans Saints podcast. I'm Aaron Summers. The Saints wrapped up their three-day mandatory mini camp this past week. There was 100% attendance. It was really great to see a lot of the guys getting time together on the field, developing those skills, learning the playbook a little bit better for some of the newer guys, and developing chemistry with everyone on the team. They did some team building activities, they went bow fishing, so there was a lot of fun to be had on and off the field. Overall, it was a really, really great week. We talked to a ton of the players, head coach Dennis Allen. You can find all of those interviews on neworleansaints.com. To break down camp, bringing in our senior Saints writer, John DeShazer, talking about what we saw this past week. John, we just wrapped up the three-day mini camp here with the Saints. I know a lot of people were excited to see everybody in attendance. I think that was the first thing that everybody noticed, the fact that Michael Thomas was back. You see Alvin Kamara for the first time, Marshawn Lattimore, Taysom Hill. What stood out to you really just on day one about the team and just the vibe that they had? Well, the biggest thing was seeing Michael Thomas on the field in any capacity, even though it's you know, limited. He was just working on short burst stuff and catching passes from David Carr. But just to see him back on the field and not standing on the sideline the entire practice, mm-hmm. uh, to see him getting a little bit of work in is encouraging because it signals that, you know, hey, he's on track to hopefully, hopefully, not would, uh, be ready for training camp. And if that's the case, and if even if not for the beginning of training camp, just ready for, you know, the regular season opener, he knows the offense uh, he's trying to work and get some chemistry with Derek Carr, which is always a good thing. So just having him back on the field to me was was the big, big thing. Uh, everybody being here is always nice. Uh, it's mandatory, so if you don't come, you know you better have an excused absence or you're going to get fined. But having everybody here was also a, a good sign. But you know, to me, the biggest thing was just having Michael Thomas uh, on the field doing something, even though it was minor stuff, but just having him around. Uh, because, you know, it's it's almost like, you know, it, it becomes one of those big, Bigfoot things. You know, where is he? Mm-hmm. You know, what is he doing? How is he, how's he recovering? And, you know, the coaching staff says, well, he's coming along. He's coming along. But nobody ever sees him. Right. And then you're thinking, you know, okay, well, where is the dude? Well, he pops up and he shows up. And, you know, you can see that he's put in some work. You know, he, he looks in phenomenal shape. He mm-hmm. always does. And so it's just a matter of getting in football shape and, and feeling comfortable with his foot. Because, you know, I've never had – a toe injury like he had, uh, something that keeps you out. Of course, I don't play in the NFL, so if I hurt my toe, I'd be fine. But, <laughs> but you know, he had to have surgery to repair it, and so it had to be something significant um, because that dude wants to play all the time. So, you know, just seeing him out there to me was, was the biggest uplift of, of, of minicamp. And I think we saw him, you know, jumping, you know, kind of pushing off of his foot, no running, no real cutting, but – it was good to see him on the football field catching some passes, and they said he'll be ready to go 100% by training camp, so that's definitely good news. Derek Carr looked very comfortable out there, and he looks like he's got great command. He's talking to everybody on the field. There's moments when he was talking one-on-one with Mike Thomas or Jake Hayner or whoever it is, just you know, trying to – develop chemistry with everybody on the field, but I feel like he's so much further along than we saw him at the start of OTAs. Yeah, he knows the offense. And so it was just a matter of getting the terminology together. And he seems like a guy who who studies more than the average person mm-hmm. would study. And so it was just a matter of getting the terminology down. They brought in John Gruden to kind of help out with that. But he's a guy, he's run this offense before. And so him getting comfortable to the point where he's calling out uh, the, the protection packages mm-hmm. is huge because Eric McCoy says he likes that. You know, it takes one thing off his plate and all he, all he has to do is worry about blocking his guy. Uh, but he's one of those guys who, you know, we heard Taysom Hill say it. You, you can sense it in the locker room. He's a guy that you gravitate to. Um, we've seen it during his news conferences. He's just a guy who says the right things. He knows how to 
how to command a team. He's he's been in the league. This will be his tenth year, mm-hmm. and so he's been a starter since he came in the league. So he understands how to command the huddle. Uh, he's a guy who studies and he works hard and he's pretty relentless. So everybody's going to gravitate to him. And so yeah, he looked he looked like his timing is good. One of the things I like is he he's showing a trust in Chris Olave that mm-hmm. you want to see. He's he's throwing him the ball in coverage and allowing Chris to either make a play or not make a play. And that's one of the things that Chris wanted to work on this offseason. And it's one of the things that, you know, Dennis Allen said he wanted out of his receivers to make challenge catches. And it's one of the things that Derek Carr is probably going to allow. Now, if, if Michael Thomas is healthy, you won't have to worry about Chris Olave making a whole lot of those. Mm-hmm. But but to put him in, in – to give him that kind of trust, to say, hey, if I see you out there and maybe it's one-on-two, maybe it's one-on-one, I'm going to give you a chance. And so we've seen that in two instances. We saw it on a deep pass in OTAs uh, against Marcus May. He catches that one for a touchdown. We saw one yesterday on, on Wednesday where he throws a deep one down the right sideline. He catches that one against Alante Taylor, mm-hmm. takes it in for a touchdown. So it's, it's one of those things where you like to see him developing that kind of chemistry. Now, again, it's mini camp, and I don't want to get too overboard with it because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the Cam Jordan camp where – Nobody's got on pads. Speed, right. Yeah, nobody's yeah. got on pads, and you don't know if that pass is going to be complete under ordinary circumstances because you know there might be some pressure or something like that. But it's just good to see him basically saying, "Look, if I see you in those situations, I'm going to throw it to you. Make a play for me." And Chris Olave has come up with it for a, a couple of times. And everybody seems to be on the same page. There haven't mm-hmm. been any miscues. People are running the routes they're supposed to, mm-hmm. so that's good sign. Obviously, with a lot of new people in on the offense we've seen Taysom Hill in so many different roles this week what do you like that you've seen from him and and maybe just the the fluidity that they're allowing him right now Uh, the thing I think I noticed the most about him is he seems to have peace of mind Mm -hmm. he he seems happy um I know I, I can't speak for him but it didn't seem like he was this happy the last couple of seasons just because you know, it it was a little bit fluid. He didn't know if he was, you know, he's competing for the starting quarterback. And, you know, he, he didn't know necessarily what his role was. And, you know, I think there's a definitive, this is what we want you to do. And he kind of, you know, he kind of explained it out. You know, look, they looked at my snaps and where I had my reps last year during games. And that's how we're going to tailor practices. They're going to get me in those situations. And he just seems to have a peace of mind. And he seems to have a great respect for Derek Carr mm-hmm. at quarterback. You know, he says, hey, this guy's played a lot of football. He's played a lot of productive football. And so it seems like he's, you know, I don't want to say, you know, falling in line, but it just seems like he's really, really comfortable with what he's doing. Uh, we know what kind of phenomenal player he is. He's one of those guys that he can change a game, um, whether it's running as a quarterback, whether it might, it might be throwing as a quarterback. He might fool around and block a punt for you. He can catch some passes, and he want, that's one of the things he said he mm-hmm. hopes is going to expand his route running and, and pass catching. But uh, he just seems to be at ease. And now, of course, of course, it could be, you know, he's got a new addition to the family and <laughs> right. probably hectic around the house, and so you got to have a little bit more patience around there. But he just seems to be in a good place mentally on the football field, and, and hopefully it stays that way. I think it will stay that way because he's he seems to have a defined role that he's pleased with Mm -hmm. and and that's the you know you can't please everybody and he's a guy who wants to be on the field he plays so many different positions I think they're going to figure out ways to get him on the field more you know whether it's at quarterback or whether it's at tight end it might be at at, it might even be at running back we don't know Uh, but I think they're going to figure out ways to get him on the field a little bit more and I think that when he's on the field the Saints are able to produce, so it makes sense to try to get them involved as much as they can. I don't know if you saw it, but today there was a moment where Alvin Kamara took the snap, tossed it to Derek Carr, who tossed it to Taysom Hill. I mean, they were doing some crazy trickery out there. And I know we've heard Coach Allen talk about how this is the time where you can put people in different positions and try things out, but it just looked like they were having fun too. Yeah. I mean, Alvin, you know, he's always talking about taking snaps of quarterback. So, you know, <laughs> to see him out there, because there might be a situation in the game where they might actually do that. And I mean, this is the time you work on that stuff. You try to get the bugs out, you know, here and in training camp and you kind of get it perfected. 
Um, if you've got Alvin taking a snap in, in a, you know, a, a potential wildcat and he's pitching it to Derek Carr, well, Derek Carr can do a couple of things. Either he can pitch it to Taysom or he can pull up mm-hmm. and throw it. So, you know, that's, that's something that you want to at some point get on film because you want teams to have to respect that. Right. If, you, if you get in the game, you want them to have to game plan for that because if they're not prepared for it, it could turn out to be a huge play uh, for the Saints. So, you know, it, you, know you work on your, all your trickery right now and, you get it all in, and you you know I, I don't know how voluminous the Saints playbook is, but it, I mean they've been adding this thing since 2006. Yeah. I'd hate to be somebody who had to learn this offense because they've been adding and adding and adding and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, and I don't know how thick that thing is, <laughs> but that's why they always say you know we we want to draft guys who are tough and smart and mm-hmm. you know that kind of stuff. You better be smart if you play an offense on this team because they're going to put a lot of stuff on your plate. And if you can't do it all, it means your reps go down. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you can't help the team if you're not on the field. And so you better figure out that that playbook. And so, you know, I'm looking forward to that that kind of play. I've seen – we've seen Alvin in, in, the, in the Wildcat once or twice before. Hadn't been really productive, but this setup might work. We saw Alvin taking some deep balls, too. And usually he's not used on the outside in that way. So it seems like they're trying to mix some stuff up when it comes to Kamara as well. Well, this is getting back to his roots, though. His first four years, I think first four years, he caught 81 passes per year. And so he was a threat out of the backfield. And on the wheel routes, he was dangerous. You get him one-on-one with a linebacker, and that is advantage Alvin Kamara Mm -hmm. every time. And so to be able to get him back to his roots a little bit, I think you'll probably have a happier Alvin Kamara. Now he doesn't mind carrying the ball. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't mind that. It gets him a little bit more beat up, but he'll do it. But to get him more involved in the passing game, we heard, you know, David, uh, David, Derek Carr say a couple of days ago, there might be some situations where you throw it to Alvin five times in a row mm-hmm. because he's that good in the passing game. And so you want to get him the ball in as many ways as possible. Uh, he can be a deep threat down that sideline on the wheel route if you had. He can line up in the slot if you ask him to. He could probably line up wide if you ask him to. He's that smart a player. So he knows the playbook. He's a talented player. And getting the ball in his hands on offense, uh, whether Michael Thomas is healthy, whether Chris Olave is productive, whether Rashid Shahid is productive, whether Taysom Hill is productive, getting the ball in Alvin Kamara's hands, to me, uh, that's where you start on this offense because – he can make so many things happen. I think I think Derek Carr said one of those things where, where he's in the media room and it's pretty full and he's like, you know, he, Alvin's one of those guys, you can give him the ball right now and he'll make everybody in the room miss and get to the door and get out. Mm-hmm. You know, he's that kind of a player. So, you know, getting him involved in the passing game will be huge for this team. And then you have Jamal Williams, the addition at running back. And then even Kirk Merritt now has been taking all of his reps at running back. There seems like there's just so many options, and you don't haven't even talked about the tight ends yet. Yeah, there's going to be some there's going to be some opportunities at running back. We think because at some point this this Alvin Kamara legal case is going to come to a head, and the expectation is that there is going to be a suspension. We don't know how long that's going to be, but whenever it comes and if it comes, then Jamal Williams is going to have to be ready, and certainly uh, Kendra. Uh, is right. going to have to be ready. He, he he hadn't been able to participate yet, so he's going to have to be ready. And so, you know, those are things that you hope to see develop here in training camp and mini camp and those kinds of things. But tight end is one of those positions where you feel like Juwan Johnson can make another significant jump. Mm-hmm. Um, Foster Moreau, you feel like he can be a good addition. Uh, so you don't know – you know, about everybody else. But those two guys you feel really, really good about. And, you know, of course, you got Taysom to throw in there, too, as another tight end. So you feel really good about that position when you have those three guys because you feel like you have somebody who can do a little bit of everything. I think Foster Moreau's probably pretty good blocking or receiving. Uh, Juwan Johnson's more of a receiver. Taysom might be a little bit more of a receiver, but he's a guy who who doesn't mind sticking his head in there blocking mm-hmm. also. So I think they feel pretty good with the position. Maybe you add another guy to get a body there to maybe help out some, depending on how much Taysom Hill plays at tight end. So that's one of those things where – and Lucas Kroll, I don't want to forget him because yeah. he feels like – he looks like a guy yeah. who has improved and might be ready to make the 53-man. We'll see. 
I mean, it's really hard to evaluate the offensive line right now without the pads on, with the injuries that they've had. So that's kind of – we can table that maybe for training camp. And then you move on to the other side with the defensive line, and and that's going to look a lot different than it has over the past couple seasons. I mean, it's really Cam Jordan that's going to be holding it down. You bring in some other vets or some older guys from other teams and free agency – and then, I mean, how much run do you think some of these rookies are going to get? They're going to play. Um, <laughs> Brissy is going to play. Um, Isaiah Foskey is going to play. Uh, those guys were drafted in positions where, you know, you're talking about a first rounder and, mm-hmm. and, and, and a, another high pick. Those guys are going to play. They were drafted to play. And the Saints like a deep rotation on the defensive line because guys get hurt. Uh, you like to be able to run them in and out of the game to keep them fresh. Uh, Cam Jordan, as much as he hates to admit it, is getting to be older. Mm-hmm. And even though he would play every snap of every game if you let him, he's probably a better player if he plays fewer snaps and stays a little bit fresher. Um, you don't know what's going to happen with Peyton Turner. Unfortunately, his health has not held up these mm-hmm. first couple of seasons. So you got to get a healthy season out of him. But you bring in the rookies. Uh, you bring in the free agents, the unrestricted free agents, that defensive tackle. And you feel like – you know, you don't really know until you get in training camp and you put on the pads and you really get a better feel for it at the joint practices. Yeah. Not when these guys are practicing more so against each other because the joint practices are better than the preseason games. That's where you get your real reps in and they might not even play in the preseason games because they'll get the reps in really during the joint practices. That's where we'll kind of get a feel for what the defensive line kind of could be or develop into as the season goes along of course you're talking about 17 games they'll gel better but at least we'll have an early indication Mm -hmm. of what they might be able to do in those in those joint practices and the saints have two of them this year they're going to host the texans here in new orleans and then they will be in la against the chargers so that's going to be some really good experience for them over training camp you talk about depth and different areas on the field i think there's a lot of different defensive backs there's a few corners we're going to have to work through figure out who the starters are going to be between Paulson and Debo Lante Taylor maybe where they're going to play and then you have the linebackers which is an area where I don't think there is as much depth no that's thin they're thin (laughs) um you you pray that the Iron Man you know Demario Davis does not get injured because he's been so productive and he's been so reliable and he can play every down uh, passing or running every game. Uh, Pete Werner, who was really having a great season last year, but got hurt. Yeah. And Pete Werner has been injured, you know, off and on his first couple of seasons. You need him to stay healthy. Uh, beyond those guys, you know, Zach Bond's a guy who's played some snaps, but not a lot of snaps. So I don't know if you know what you have with him, but, you know, you would feel like he might be the guy who steps in and starts, you know, in that in that other linebacker position, if they're going to go with three linebackers. Now they might just go with two linebackers and yeah. go with an extra DB because you know they like the big nickel, they like you know having an extra safety, and they got it. You know, the, today's NFL, you're going to have to have some. You know, you're going to have to have multiple DBs on the field. So, but Demario Davis really is the key to what to what's going on at linebacker. He he cannot afford to go down. Um, you don't want Pete Werner to go down last year. In that situation, Kate Nellis was able right. to step in. Kate Nellis ain't here no more, so somebody's got to be capable of doing that. Maybe it's Zach Baum because they've been waiting for him to kind of blossom into what they hope he can be. He's shown it on special teams. He's a phenomenal special teams player, but can he do it in the defense, mm-hmm. whether it's base or whether it's sub packages? Can he do it on the field on defense? And you know, he was he was a defensive end in college, and so. The adjustment has taken a minute or two, and so hopefully this will be the year that he jumps up. I don't know about the rest of the linebackers if if they feel really, really good about what they have there in terms of if a guy's got to play. Right. Like, well, DeMarco Jackson, yeah. you drafted him pretty high last year, but he was out all last season. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's going to take an adjustment for him to get in now. He played at Appalachian State. He was outstanding college player and maybe he's got the instincts to do what you want him to do on the NFL level so hopefully he'll be a guy that can be reliable we know he's going to start out on special teams of course because that's where everybody Mm -hmm. starts out if you're not a starter and hopefully he'll be able to contribute 
when they need him to because at some point in time, you're going to need him. It, that's just the way the NFL is. You, 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 you're not wood and you hope guys don't get hurt. Somebody's going to get hurt. That's just the way it is. Somebody's going to get hurt, and he might have to be called on, and he's going to have to be able to produce in a fairly complex defense also because Dennis Allen you know, can get pretty exotic on defense. Now, you know, they like to bump and run corners. Mm-hmm. They like to play man-to-man out there, but they can get pretty exotic. So, you know, Paulson Debo and Marshawn Lattimore, you feel like they can hold up. Paulson Debo came in last year with that, that injured ankle, and he just never got right. Yeah. And it allowed Alante Taylor to get on the flo- on, on the field and blossom. Now Alante moves probably inside to the slot, him and Bradley Roby, and so we'll see how he's able to handle that because it's a totally different perspective on the game being in the slot. And he's been doing some of that here in mini camp and in OTAs, and it depends on how comfortable he gets with it. And it, it's just a totally different world, and you can make those mistakes in mini camp and training camp. Can't make them on Sundays in the NFL. Otherwise, it's six. So hopefully he can adapt because he's got a lot of ability. We saw that last mm-hmm. year. Uh, he said last year he thought he could play the nick. He could play the nickel if it, if it came to it. He could play in the slot. So hopefully he'll get a chance to do that during games because you want your best guys on the field, and he is clearly one of the Saints' best guys. The Saints definitely value versatility when it comes to their defensive players. They like them to be able to play a few different places on the field or move in to different roles based on the defensive you know, packages that they're playing or coverages. The other battle, you know, maybe a battle at corner between Adebo and Taylor, but the other one that I think is intriguing is the kicking battle. Uh, Will Lutz has been your kicker for a while, and then you, bl- you bring in Blake Groupie, who just doesn't quite look like a NFL player. He's about 12 years old. He's 5'7", but he can kick. I mean, he's done very well in every session. Done very well. But, but it, it, look, if, if Will Lutz is healthy, and I think he's healthy, and I'm, I, you know, he had one of those years where if you're a kicker, you just don't want to have that kind of year that he had last year where he missed some fairly routine Will Lutz kicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, was not happy with his season, and so they bring in some competition for him. But if he's healthy, because he's been extremely accurate here in, in training camp, in, in mini camp and during the offseason, so has Blake Groovy. But Will Lutz is a guy who has kicked pressure kicks in NFL games. So he's going to have to lose the job more so than Groupie winning the job. And right now, I mean, he he's looking over his shoulder. I mean, yeah. you know, he's got to look down when he looks over his shoulder to find Groupie. <laughs> but he's looking over his shoulder. He knows that he didn't have a good season, and they brought in some competition to make sure that he's on his P's and Q's. And so it looks like he's done that here in this offseason. He looks great so far, mm-hmm. but so does Groupie. Groupie might be one of those guys who, if he's not kicking in New Orleans, he might be kicking for another team especially if he gets some opportunities in preseason mm-hmm. games where he can show off a little something and somebody might say, well, you know what? We're not all that crazy about our kicking game right now. We'll take a chance on this guy. He could end up on somebody's practice squad because, you know, we know f- the Saints will do that with a kicker. They did it with Blake Gillick and that punter a couple of years ago. So, I mean, I think it looks like Blake Groupie can kick in the NFL. Yeah, He looks like an NFL kicker. He just might not be the Saints NFL kicker if Will Lutz keeps this up because Will Lutz is a reliable guy. Now, then you can start looking at stuff like, okay, salary-wise, Will Lutz costs a little bit more. Uh But, you know, it's one of those things where, but, you know, you pay a little bit more because the guy's reliable. He's made made game winners. And so you say, okay, last year was an aberration. That's not going to happen again. He's going to be back to being the Will Lutz that we know. Yeah, it's always fun. You know, you bring in other people, the competition. It does make, you know, Lutz better, I think. So it's not a bad thing to have that. Anything else when we've talked about a lot of the positions, but what about the – there's been some new coaches here. Have you noticed anything with them? The defensive coordinator, Joe Woods, seems like we have a lot of people on the staff that are very heavy as far as their experience on the secondary yeah, the thing about Joe Woods is he he kind of works in sync with DA, with Dennis Allen. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 
he knows what Dennis Allen wants. I think they're kind of like minded. I asked him about it yesterday, and he said, "Look, you know, I'll give him my, you know, I'll give him my perspective on things. But if you're going to give him your perspective, you better have empirical data to back it up to show that what you're talking about has been successful. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should be because Dennis Allen has had a really successful defense here. I think they were second in yards allowed last year, yeah. and I think they might have been maybe." third or fourth in touchdowns. You know, they only allowed 17 touchdowns last year. And so that kind of thing, when you're adding people, you know, Marcus Robertson in the secondary, you're adding people, you expect those people to coach to that level because this defense has been at that level. And so hopefully they'll pick up the ball and run with it because they're going to have to. Ty Grantham on the defensive line, mm -hmm. all these guys DA picked because he wanted a staff that reflected him and his teaching and his philosophy. So hopefully all that stuff will sink in, uh, especially during training camp. Um, you know, I hadn't heard players, you know, say anything negative about him. Right. They hadn't given in any negative vibes about any of mm -hmm. them. Marcus Robertson played in the NFL, so that's always a bonus when guys that you're coaching probably saw you play and you can give them pointers on things that you know will be successful because you've seen them executed and be successful. So hopefully all those things will sync up uh, in training camp uh, with ter in terms of the chemistry and the coaching and everything else because, you know, this is where you work the kinks out. This yeah. is where you get the bugs out. Speaking of having NFL experience, Ted Ginn Jr. here, being able to work out with the team a little bit, help him out, give him some pointers. Have you had a chance to talk to him? No, I hadn't had a chance to talk to Ted. I mean, he, was talk he spoke to me when he was walking off the field the first day, but I didn't get a chance to talk to him. But just to see him around because, you know, when, when Ted left the organization, I, I – he didn't leave under, I don't want to say, I don't want to say it was bad circumstances, but I think Ted wasn't ready to leave. Uh -huh. and, you know, the Saints just needed to make a decision. But to have him back around under the roof uh, to be coaching a little bit because I had no idea Ted was interested in being a coach at all. I know his dad is a coach. Yeah. And But, but Ted, I had no idea he had an interest in that. But it's good to see him, you know, out there. Now, you know, one thing Ted – yeah, you know, he was one of the fastest guys in the league when he played. So I don't know if he can coach anybody to run as fast as he did, <laughs> <laughs> besides Rashid Rashid Shahid. But um, yeah, it's good to see him back in the building. Good to see him, you know, kind of happy and being around. Because like I said, I I didn't necessarily know if he he left on the best of terms when he when he, as a player. But to have him back shows that hey, he he feels like he's part of the organization again. It seems like everybody's been pretty happy. Every time you're talking to people this week, that's nothing but a good compliments of other players, really excited about what they have on the field, the mm -hmm. energy. I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm just naive, but it does feel, feels different. No, it, it, it feels a little bit more relaxed. I mean, you know, last year was the first year under Dennis Allen. And so, you know, he's, you know, pretty much retained a lot of the staff and, you know, there's, you know, there's, I guess some pins and needles until you tweak it and get it how you want it. And so, you know, you finally, you, you go through a season, it's seven and 10. It's not, you, you're not as successful as you want to be. You go through some ups and downs, but you know what it is you want as a coach. And so you get into the off season and now you're better able to say, this is what I want from my coaching staff. Um, this is what we want from Taysom Hill. We've got it specified down to how many snaps he mm. took at each position so we can cater practice to that. And those kinds of things tend to make people comfortable. When, when players feel like coaches know what they're talking about, they feel comfortable. Yeah. That, that's the way that goes. I mean, if a player feels like a coach doesn't know what he's talking about, he doesn't respect him, he's probably not going to listen a whole lot. You know, it just, it's a bad situation. But I think these players respect these coaches from a teaching standpoint. Yeah. It was just funny to me to see so many kids around, to see the guys playing, their families here, the kids in the locker room, they're all playing basketball. They're, they're hanging out. Camp's over. And they could start their vacations, but they're still spending time around each other. It just looks like they've been enjoying this time together. Yeah, well, DeMario don't fool nobody. I mean, he's got his son here, and his son and a couple other kids were out there, you know, basically playing football in the middle of the field. Yeah. And so that was just to tire them out so they'll be tired when they get home. That's all, that, <laughs> that's, all that's about. When you get kids out there, when you let them do that, that's just to let them get tired before they get home. But, the veteran move. Yeah, but it, 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 I mean, it's, you know, the Saints have, have, Really, it started under Coach Payton, and I guess it's enhancing someone to Dennis Allen, a family organization. They yeah. really, really 
like to have family around. So, you know, you bring in a Ted Ginn Jr. and you, you hire Jari Evans to be your mm-hmm. assistant offensive line coach. And, you know, you, you allow guys in these situations, relaxed situations, to bring their kids in the locker room or on the practice field. All those things are things that become enticing, not just to the players here, but they become enticing to potential free agents. You know, guys talk. Families, I mean, <laughs> wives talk. Yeah. yeah, wives talk, players talk, and they're like, hey, man, this shop isn't bad. You know, I had my son here, and they didn't have a problem with it. And, you know, oh, man, when I was when I brought my son to the locker room, they were like, you know, you can't, you can't be in here. Well, you, those things matter to players. And so, you know, it's, it's good to be under that relaxed atmosphere and have these guys just – you know, you just feel good when you got your kids around. I think I think Ronald Curry has his daughter and son here. Mm-hmm. And I know his daughter's kind of on on St. Staff right yeah. now. So, yeah. you know, those things matter. Yeah, she's a, a communications yeah. associate. So she's getting some experience in the business. Demario's son, Roman, had an entire to-go tray of bacon that he was eating. So mm-hmm. You can do that at that I, age. I guess. Yeah, at that I, age, I told him you I didn't think that. that was healthy, but... Yeah, well, at that age, I mean, you know, hey, you can do that. It'll burn off real fast. <laughs> well, I appreciate the time. It's been a fun week covering mini camp, and, you know, we're going to take a little break with everybody else. We'll bring the podcast back for training camp. Yep. It's going to be good to uh, to take a little break, take a deep breath, and uh, everybody recharge their batteries and go and be with family and all that stuff, and then we'll come back in July and we'll bake and we'll watch football. Yeah, we certainly will, but look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining me, John. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Saints podcast. Join us three times per week on NewOrleansSaints.com, the Saints mobile app, or you can download the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Saints podcast.